Many of our ancestors have died on this red planet in this red clay. Just understand this. Some learned to navigate this red planet and some struggled until their last breath. These brave warriors transmitted data to us bit by bit until their final moments. These machines embarked on a long journey to explore the mysteries of life on Mars, constantly seeking and seeking, embodying perseverance. Whether it's Mars or our warriors who loses or who is forgiven or who dies today. Two out of 76. Or then say why do comment because your snapping time is like cardio. Forever has been lost. Just understand some wheels of this red house have been learned and some last breaths keep searching till the end. The story is definitely complete but it all started with rice. During the reign of Space Reg, Yususasar was not in orbit of Prithvi, but the first spacecraft of human history was launched into the botanical garden, creating history. Now the next number was also the moon. The first to land on the moon was also a tough task. In 1957, Sputnik's success had focused the entire world's attention on the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Three years later, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics chose Mars as its next target adventurous extraterrestrial Mars. On October 10, 1960, Marsnik was launched. This was the first attempt to reach Mars. Shortly after launch, its gyroscope failed, then the altitude control system. After that, it veered off its course and the engine completely shut down. It didn't even reach orbit. It crashed into the Arabian Sea and was lost. The mission failed. Four days later, on October 24th, Mars Nikto 2 was launched. This also does not mean to go to orbit. The mission failed due to the inability to ignite the engine of its second stage from the fuel tank to the oxygen leakage. After this, three more missions failed, which were flyby missions, not Soviet Union. A Mars flyby mission named Zontu was launched on November 30th, 1964. This was the fourth spacecraft of the Soviet Union, which was launched for Mars flyby. Zon 2 was supposed to land on Mars. A photo television camera was also installed on it. It had a magnetometer, radiation detector, chase, particle detector, radio telescope, and other instruments for its mission. However, this too failed to reach Mars. Its contact was lost from the flyby itself. By May 1965, it was lost in space. Its solar panel was also damaged. It's running on half power. This spacecraft was the first to reach Mars, firing its engines. On August 6, 1965, it flew by Mars at a distance of about 931 miles. However, the spacecraft was silent and did not transfer a single bit of data to us. In the end, despite all the efforts, this mission also failed miserably. On November 30, 1971, National Aeronautics and Space Administration launched Mariner 9, which was an orbiter. This task was challenging. The insertion of a spacecraft into the orbit of another planet remained a daunting task for National Aeronautics and Space Administration. On November 13, 1971, Mariner 9 became the first spacecraft to orbit another planet. Mariner 9 mapped 85% of Mars's surface. When it first arrived at Mars, a large dust storm had engulfed the planet. The entire surface of Mars was visible. The planetary scientists were completely surprised by this sight. They reprogrammed Mariner 9 and used it for some important imaging work. Here we remember Mars 2 and Mars 3. Those who could not be reprogrammed and were lost in this terrifying storm National Aeronautics and Space Administration learned from those mistakes and made leg like, mission reprogrammable and it finally worked. It went far away. Imagery has given signs of rivers, craters, volcanoes, valleys, and even water flow and strong winds on Mars. Both of its moons, Phobos and Deimos, were also photographed. This orbiter has transmitted over 7,000 images to us and also detected water vapors on the south pole of Mars. On October 27, 1972, this orbiter's communication was lost forever. Several attempts were made to re-establish communication, but to no avail. 
The spacecraft was always lost to us. It is still orbiting Mars today and it is said that it will remain in orbit until 2022. After this, it will enter the Martian atmosphere and burn up, eventually falling back to the surface of Mars. In this way, there will be another war in this universe. A war that is considered the biggest event in the solar system. After the success of Wallace Mariner 9, the Viking mission is planning both Viking 1 and Viking 2. Each had a lander and an orbiter alike. In National Aeronautics and Space Administration's history, this mission holds a unique distinction because National Aeronautics and Space Administration was the first to land on this red planet. And the world was watching to see what the atmosphere of the world beyond Earth looked like. Viking 1 successfully navigates to Mars and on July 20th, 1976, Viking 1 lander is the first to land on a place on Mars named Crece Planitia. Following this, Viking 2 also successfully lands on a place named Utopia Planitia on the opposite side of the planet on September 3rd, 1976. Now, there were only two machines left, which were completely capable of ruling on that red planet. The sky was open to them and below was the red soil of Mars, where they were to find the answers to life. In response, Viking 1 sent two historic images of the transit. One showed the patterns on the surface of Mars. The other image showed the ground and the sky as one. Mars's first footprint was no less than any athlete's record. These snapshots were taken on Mars before nightfall. At night, this lander was put into sleep mode and it was not certain whether the vehicle was also shut down. Ivan didn't want to miss the chance either, wondering if the lander ever saw the morning sun on Mars. That's why he quickly took the samples. Six weeks later, Viking 1 transmitted the first color image of Mars. People were so excited to see those images that they demanded the public to see them. National Aeronautics and Space Administration's Viking had broadcasted the images from Mars on television just 30 minutes after receiving them, but they couldn't calibrate the images in this rush. People saw Mars as blue for the first time, just like one would see Earth. However, later National Aeronautics and Space Administration scientists clarified in a press conference that the sky of Mars is actually pink. It was not known yet and how much was left to explore in this mission. However, Viking 2's seismometer had a malfunction on Mars and had to be rebooted by Hubble. That was in the magnitude 3 of the Mars quake level. Then we realized that there is movement in the tectonic plates of Mars as well. This mission also revealed that there are signs of ancient water on Mars. But at this time, Mars is a very dry place. You must have seen this feminine image of Mars somewhere or the other. Thanks to the Viking mission, this picture was also taken by the orbiter of the mission. The mission was planned to work on Mars for 90 days. However, not all orbiters and landers performed beyond expectations. Viking 2 orbiter was able to capture Mars for two years, much more than expected, and the Explorer was launched on July 25, 1978 to give the orbiter a boost. The Viking 2 orbiter mission was now officially over. But the story is not over yet. Both Viking landers performed three biology experiments on Mars. The gas exchange experiment, one of the experiments that was performed on Mars, detected a rapid release of gas, while the labeled release experiment, another one performed on Mars, detected a rapid increase in the release of radioactive gas when a nutrient was added. The ironic thing was that the results were confusing. The Vikings were searching for signs of life. The Vikings were searching for signs of life. The Vikings were They were searching for signs of life, they were. Perhaps it was the organic matter itself that went extinct, but all the fossils were extinct after this event. It seems that the Vikings were searching for signs of life. The Vikings had searched for organic material. In a 2006 study, it was said that the Vikings were not so sensitive that they could detect traces of life on Mars. The Vikings had just scratched Mars and found traces of life. If the Viking had not been given the right organic material, then why would we have found traces of life again? Did you understand? 
And why is there so much interest in going to Mars? Why is so much money being spent on going to Mars? Is there any link in all these things? Or is National Aeronautics and Space Administration hiding something from us? We have received hundreds of thousands of images from the Viking mission, which are still being analyzed to this day. Viking showed us for the first time that the surface of Mars is completely barren. In such a way that meteorites are found on Earth, which tells us that those meteorites will come from Mars itself. But did those meteorites bring life to Earth? This is a big question of debate. Sun, in 1980, Viking 2 lander and Viking 1 orbiter tell us, and we also lose contact with Viking 1 lander in 1982. But until the very end, last bit of data, this mission has left us, and along with it, our time has also gone, this mission. This war also went to sleep in that same Christian in China. Now this house was the target of our next target, we will know in the next videos. Until then, subscribe to the channel and definitely turn on the bell notification so that you keep getting updates of the channel. If you liked the video then like and share it too. We meet with such informative videos 